Greetings, fun seekers. It's Christmas morning. You rush to the Christmas tree. Underneath the Christmas tree, there is a present. It has your name on it. To George P. Burdell from Santa Claus. You rip the wrapping paper off, and what do you find to your surprise? But a brand new solderless breadboard. This is the happiest moment of your entire life. Now we must assemble it to, so that we may begin our adventures in EC 3043, the most fun you'll ever have with your clothes on. So there's no strain wrap, so I open the box from the bottom, I pull it out. So here we find the basic breadboard, and here we have things called binding posts. We must attach the binding posts to the breadboard. So we use an appropriate tool, a samurai sword, <coughs> Excalibur, uh, a Bowie knife, no, ordinary scissors will do. So I snip this thing off, I drop the binding posts out. So here we have little nuts on the end, and so we need to attach these to these uh, holes on the breadboard. So I need to use an appropriate tool, such as pliers. So I grab this, I open this, and rotate it. It comes out like so. And so I'm twisting it counterclockwise. I've got this little black thing here, and I've got this black thing here. So I put this thing in like this. I put this nut over here. I lift this thing up like so. Now I need to get the black thing down here so that it fits in like so. Now I need to get the nut on here. And so, So now I turn it, I tighten it up, now I come back here, and now I need to tighten the sucker up, so I'm going to hold the pliers on it like this from the bottom, so I grab it, hold this, then rotate it. and eventually it's going to catch. Perhaps I should use a more efficient tool. So I'll bring this thing out. Grab it. Hold it and turn it until it tightens. Now after I've tightened it, I'm going to turn it counterclockwise so that this thing unscrews and underneath it here you'll see a little hole. The hole is where a wire goes. So I need to do this for the other three binding posts. So again, I take the nut off. I put this here. It's up to you to decide where to put the green, the red, and the yellow. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put this so that it lines up with these holes on this uh, steel plate for the breadboard. So I've got it right here. Now I take this one, I drop it down on there. That insulates it from the uh, metal. I'm going to turn this till it tightens. And I'm going to grab this, turn it a little bit more so that it gets tight, like so. Now, I'm going to untighten it from this side, and again, the hole is exposed. So now we need to do this for the other two. So I unscrew this. Put this down in here. Again, I look at it and line up this little flat part here on the metal thing with the flat part on the uh, plastic, which is designed to keep it from turning. So now I get this in here. I put the nut on here. I turn this like so. And I've got it here. So now I'm going to grab this tool again, tighten this like so. It's tight. 
I'm going to rotate this, unscrew this, so again the hole is exposed here and here. The final binding post goes exactly the same way. We remove the nut. And if you rotate it, you'll see there's a flat part on the plastic, as there is a flat part on the other three plastic binding posts. And on this hole in the metal plate, there's a flat part here. So if I put it here, and then rotate it so that the flat part fits on either side. We get this, so I get the red plastic washer and put it here. Then I turn the nut, like so. So I've got this. So now I'm going to tighten it like this with this tool. If you need tools to do this, the people in the technical area, James Steinberg or Kevin Pham, can give you the tools. Well, not give you, they will loan you the tools. If you can't find them, see me or Dr. Robinson. So I've tightened this one, so I can now unscrew it here. So now we have the binding post attached to the metal plate, and there's a hole in here for each of these. So now we get the wire jumper kit, which we bought with our EC3043 parts kit. Open it up and get a wire of an appropriate length. So I'm going to get a wire here and I want to check the length. Too short. This one's probably too long, but I'm going to use it anyway so that I can get further along on this. So we need to create a ground rail on the breadboard. So let's say we're going to pick the bottom one here to be the ground rail, and this is going to be ground, which is why it has the symbol ground here. So I bend this wire here, I turn this, and then I'm going to bend this wire like so, then I'm going to get it in between the holes on this binding post. So I open this thing up, and I try to find where the hole's at. So it's, uh, in here. So now I can then tighten this thing down. And now this binding post will be the ground for our breadboard system. Now I do the same thing for the other three. Okay, we're going to make one of these plus 15, the other one minus 15, and this one is ground. So on this one, I'm going to put this here. Let's say we're going to make this one minus 15. So I'm going to put the, uh, this wire through the yellow binding post. Turn it down and be careful that you don't clamp down on the insulation and not make the electrical contact. So let's say that we want this one to be minus 15. So I can put this, say here, I'm going to make this minus 15, so I'm going to put this in a hole here, like so. And so this is where we're going to connect the minus 15 uh, banana plug lead from the bench DC power supply. So this is minus 15 volts here. We want to put a 100 ohm resistor from here to the trace that we're going to use as minus 15. So I'm going to put a 100 ohm resistor here. Then I'm going to put a wire here, and then this will make this the minus 15 trace. Then we want to do the same thing for the plus 15 trace. So I'm going to open this thing up, get a wire in these holes, get this in here, tighten it down, and now I want to do the same thing. Steps on this side, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to get a quarter watt 100 ohm resistor. Put it here. And then put it in the trace I'm going to use as minus, as plus 15 rather. So I can put it here. So this trace is plus 15. This trace is minus 15. Now we need to get 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors from the uh, trace to ground. 
So the ground terminal is up here. And so this trace is the minus 15. This trace is the plus 15. So if this is minus 15, we look on the electrolytic capacitor. There's three things here we need to find. One is the capacitance value, 100 microfarads. The other is the voltage rating, but it has a polarity associated with it. There's a plus side and the minus side. The minus sign is indicated with this little marking on the side, which is the negative side. Please look for it rather than trying to figure out which lead is longer, which is sometimes used to indicate the negative lead. It's best to look for the minus sign because that tells you which side is the negative side of the capacitor. On the plus side, there's no marking here. Why is there no marking on the plus side? Because paint costs money. And they know that if you tell you which side is the minus sign, you'll eventually be able to figure out which side is the plus side. Okay, so I take this, which is going to be minus. So I connect the minus label here and stick it in this hole. And stick the other one where we're going to have ground. So I need to get the thing in here. And I normally do this with my fingers. If it gets too hard, I'll grab the pliers and use it to get it in there. Then we get one on the plus 15 volt binding post. So this one, we need to get the, this is going to be positive. So I'm going to put this positive one here, the positive lead here. Get in there. And then I want the, this one on the uh, ground. Now, there's a good possibility that this breadboard is broken halfway down. And so for that reason, I normally put a jumper wire from here to here. And so let's get a shorter wire, which we'll use as a jumper wire. So we'll put the jumper wire, say, from here. A little difficult to go in here. So I put this one from here to here. And it's very difficult for me to get this in here, so I'm going to grab these needle nose pliers, take this, and shove it in. Okay, so now we have our breadboard. We have a ground trace, which is this bottom trace up here on the top. We have a minus 15, which is this trace here. We have a plus 15, which is this trace here. Why are we doing this, other than I'm telling you to do it? The 100 ohm resistors are known as a poor person's fuse. A real fuse would be a piece of metal inside a glass cylinder. When you exceeded a certain current rating, it would blow and you'd have to get a new fuse. Well, a fuse like that cost about $1.25. Okay, these resistors cost 0 0.06 cents. Not 6 cents, but 0 0.06 cents. And they're actually preferable to a metal uh, cylinder fuse because when the current gets large through this quarter watt resistor, it will first get hot, then it will start to emit smoke, then it will melt in half. Should it catch on fire while you're in lab, please do not attempt to put it out with your fingers or any other body part you want to use for a couple of weeks. Simply turn the power off, figure out what you did wrong, and replace it with another 100 ohm quarter watt resistor. These electrolytic capacitors make certain that the positive and negative rails are good AC grounds. And so uh, if you get these in with the incorrect polarity, when you turn the power supply on, it may, may explode. The little cylinder will pop open, the electrolyte will pop out. Then you'll need a new electrolytic capacitor, and these are outrageously expensive. They cost 20 cents. Okay, so this is your breadboard, and from this you'll be able to build lots of circuits. This is a breadboard that was built by Decibear. This is Decibear. He was going to produce this video, but on his way here, he was attacked by a giant frog, so you got me instead. Okay, so on this breadboard, I have the four binding posts, but instead of the 100 ohm resistors, I have these things, which are large diodes. What the diodes do is make the breadboard idiot-proof, or even more um, desirable, brewer-proof. If I were to connect up the, the leads from the DC power supply and I got the wrong one on the wrong binding post and turned it on, the resistor-resistor there, it would destroy all the ICs on the breadboard. 
but with these diodes, it will emit, permit current to flow in one direction. So if I turn the power supply off, nothing bad is going to happen. Now, when you're in EC3043 lab and you ask me to assist you, I'm going to look at your circuit if it's on a breadboard like this and if it has binding post. If it doesn't, I'm going to tell you to go back and put the binding post on your breadboard because I'm unable to analyze a circuit which doesn't have binding post on it. Okay, so I want your breadboard to look like this on day one. You don't actually need the electrolytic capacitors and, and the 100 ohm resistors until we get to the portion of the current, that, the portion of the course rather, that deals with electronics. We have um, op amps which use plus and minus 15 volts. We have transistors which use from 0 to 5 or 0 to 15 volts. Okay, so these little devices, the 100 microfarad electrolytic power supply decoupling caps and the 100 ohm resistors will save you a lot of grief in the lab. And it also will make me happy, which is one of the goals of ECE 3043. Okay, I'll see you in lab.